go. So this is the third part of the Bio 212 Anatomy and Physiology 2 at Norwalk Community College review session. And we're beginning on with our analysis of the digestive system. So what I want to make sure you see here, of course, is what we're going to be focusing on is the multi-step regulatory pathways that are required to move materials through the alimentary canal such that you collect macromolecules that will be the del then delivered to the liver for metabolism. Okay, so that's going to be our goal. And what, how we're going to do this is I'm going to draw the cartoon of you. This is your nose, right? And here's your skull. And you've ingested food. Yummy, yummy. Good. There's that right there. The alimentary canal travels down into your tum-tum, right? And it's going to exit into the small intestine. Yum, yum. And then we travel out through large intestine to the rectum. Woohoo! Yay! Okay. And of course, the way it works from your reading and also the previous things I made like almost 12 hours ago is you have to think about food. All you have to do is think about your favorite food and go, oh, I am hungry. I am so hungry. In fact, I'm cooking dinner right now. Not that you need to know that or anything like that, but I've got a pan of pork loin with some asparagus and some mushrooms with about a quarter of a pound of butter sitting on top of all of it, and it's roasting inside my oven, right? So I'm thinking about that dinner, and what's happening, of course, is we're going to have the vagus nerve. We're going to switch this over to red temporarily. Right. Oh. <gasps> what just happened to my thing? Oh my god, I gotta draw the whole thing over again. Okay, so here's you again. This is your nose. This is your nose. Much bigger head. Okay, I'm gonna just simply put oh, oh, look at that. That's your mouth now. It looks more like a Monty Python skit. Right? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna hit a race and see what happens here. Doink. Let's try it one more time. Your nose. Sorry about that. Your skull. <laughs> Even more sorry about that. And did I mention there was, there we go, there's your chin. And down here will be the alimentary canal traveling down into the stomach, the stomacha. Small intestine, tweet, 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 tweet. And we'll have large intestine, tweet, 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 right? And the part that I wanted to make sure you understood there, of course, is you're thinking about food, which means something is going on here which is going to send a signal to prepare your digestive system for digestion, not just your stomach, but also the glands inside your mouth. And what you're going to do is you're going to end up essentially establishing a relay system. Food inside your mouth prepares the stomach. The stomach, as pH shifts and materials get broken down, will now send a signal into the small intestine to make the small intestine aware. And then the small intestine tells the stomach to stop, meaning slow down, process materials much more thoroughly. And then as materials pass through that small intestine, then the large intestine takes a moment or two <coughs> to process materials because we won't use as much chemical digestion inside the large intestine. We will allow the bacteria that are found inside the large intestine to actually break down the work. So even though it may not look like it, this is your digestive system. Okay, so what are the components that are found inside each of these? So let's change colors here. Let's go some neutral color here. What structures are found inside the mouth that will allow for digestion? Question mark, right? I'm assuming you understand that there are glands there. Gland is secreting primarily water, but there are digestive enzymes, lysozyme, and all of that. There is essentially nothing happening inside the esophagus with the exception of chemical digestion as a result of the mechanical mixing of materials inside the mouth. It's inside the stomach where we actually have a shift in pH. Notice I'm writing pH one more time. How many times have I written this today? pH, so that we inactivate some materials, salivary amylase, activate or further activate linguinal lipase, as well as utilize gastric lipase, and then convert pepsinogen into pepsin. So really what we're doing inside the stomach is we are digesting lipids, L-I, P, I, D, and protein. Okay. Once we turn all of this into a liquid, what's going to happen is we now are going to change color. I'm going to change color here. I don't know which color I'll use. I'll use a sort of light purple. 
or the pancreas down here, and the liver over here, where materials from the liver and materials from the pancreas mix together such that anything that leaves that pyloric sphincter will now have the pH offset, but you've now mixed digestive enzymes so that they can begin enzymatic breakdown of materials in the lumen of the small intestine and also use brush border enzymes to break down materials for absorption. Okay, Primarily coming from the liver, we're going to have bile salts. That's the major mechanism here. So we're going to actually increase triglyceride emulsification, emuls. I'm just going to put emuls. U-L-S, emulsification, right? And those bile salts literally take large groupings of uh, triglycerides, break them up into smaller pieces. That happens for that 20 some odd feet, 21, 23 feet of small intestine. But at the end of the day, what you really need to make sure you understand here is that whatever is being digested is being absorbed. So that's what the AB stands for here. It doesn't stand for, stand for antibody. And I'm going to change colors because this is where hepatic portal system is going to send materials to the liver to be metabolized. Chapter 25. Okay, so metabolism is going to happen as a result of that. Some materials travel through the hepatic portal system. If I switch to green, I hope that you understand that this means that some materials are going to travel via the lymphatic system to then return to the circulatory system to then travel to the liver for metabolism. And primarily those are lipid products. Okay. So that's a lot of detail. And I realize I'm being somewhat general, but hopefully I'm giving you the highlights so you know what to go study. Having said that, I'm going to erase this picture. Doink. It's gone. Okay. Which cells are found where and what do they do? Let's draw that whole thing all over again. Right. Give me a color here. I don't want that. I want this over here. Imagine, if you will, I put you at the board inside the classroom and said, what cells do I find inside here that are responsible for digestion? Okay. What cells inside here do I find that are responsible for digestion? what cells are responsible for di digestion and what happens inside the large intestine, right? What's, why is it, why did I draw it this way? Now let's take it a little bit further. Let's parse digestion and endocrine responsibility. What is the role of say gastrin versus secretin versus say cholecystokinine? And why in heaven's name do I keep coming back to this molecule called GIP? Well, I'll tell you, GIP regulates insulin activity. And if you don't regulate insulin activity, guess what? You can't regulate the amount of oxygen, not oxygen. Oh my God, you guys should fire me. The amount of glucose that's brought inside your cells, right? So GIP is really important. And even though I said in the original lecture that the person who made you go look for this is really a pain in the butt, you know, the reality is, is somehow inside the back of your mind, you have to start thinking to yourself, yeah, Mother Nature has a sort of bigger plan here. And that means you're going to take whatever the material is you've ingested. Let's say it's that pork roast I have upstairs cooking right now. Somehow I have to take all of that material and turn it into some monomer that my body can use. And proteins are broken down to amino acids. Carbohydrates are broken down to hopefully monomers, but if not, that's okay. A lot of the vegetables that are roasting with it will give me some fructose, which will diffuse easily through. Okay. But as we now, the point here is, okay, as you're moving through, the endocrine system is going to regulate what's going on here. And then you have to remember that small intestine regulates what the stomach is doing, but at the same time, we'll then tell the large intestine, look, prepare yourself. We're moving materials in here. And this entire system is now one big conveyor belt where you're regulating the processing of boluses of material. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's do this. Kiss that one goodbye. Move on to this one. 
How does digestion occur? So I've drawn this for you a couple of different ways already, right? So let's go back here and let's go even more simple. Where? I'm going to put a mouth up here, right? Wank. Or is a mouth right there? Where does mechanical and di chemical digestion occur? And so mechanical, mouth, teeth, tongue. Okay, nothing happens inside the esophagus. Stomach, you have an extra layer of musculature here. It is oblique, circular, longitudinal, right? And then here you have circular and longitudinal, and here you have circular and longitudinal. And notice that here it's called peristalsis. Here it's called essential churning. Here it's called peristalsis. And here it's called hostral churning. Until you finally get it out of your body, right? What's actually happening in the chemical portion here? Well, remember chemical portion here, we actually have salivary amylase. Oops, that was supposed to be an A. Salivary amylase and lingual lipase. If you read closely, you're going to read a couple of different things inside your textbook. It says lingual lipase begins acting inside the mouth, but it requires a pH shift inside your stomach to become fully functional. But you also have gastric lipase. So I think whoever wrote that part of the text is a little confused. It's working till it gets here. The pH shift shuts off the lingual lipase. Gastric lipase begins to work on whatever the lingual lip lipase managed to accomplish. And then we get into the intestine where we now have enzymes from, I got to change color here again. Remember, we went to that light purple sort of thing. Let's go over here where we had the pancreas releasing everything it can into the duodenum. And you had the liver releasing everything it can from that. Let's go to the green for gallbladder, right? Just for yucks and giggles here. Gallbladder, right? Everything's concentrated. It now mixes inside here. And this is what's going to be now passed on top of this. So we have lots and lots and lots of chemical digestion occurring inside here. Let's go back here. Did you guys notice mine got much faster at this? Okay. <laughs> okay. So you have chemical digestion, but I want you to pay attention to we're aiming to get amino acids, right? We're aiming to get carbohydrates. We're aiming to get triglycerides. And we're aiming to get the monomers of nucleotide breakdown, which are going to be nucleotides. So it'll be G, A, T, C, and U, right? So that's what we're hoping to going to accomplish here. But you'll notice inside the textbook, they spend the least amount of time talking about this. Second least amount of time talking about that. They spend most of their time talking about amino acids and carbohydrate breakdown. The last thing I want to talk about in this figure is what's going on here. I'm going to change colors just for effect because I'm getting used to it now. What's going on here? Large intestine, man. We're absorbing some water, whatever's residually left over, right? But we're letting bacteria work inside of our body so we can make materials that we can't ourselves make. And that's significant, right? There are a lot of things we can't make. There are amino acids we can't make. We can't, we have to ingest. And that means when we're thinking about what these bacteria are doing inside of our flora and fauna of our gut, we require things such as B12. And I'm going to put B12 there in red because I want you to now go back and figure out what intrinsic factor is for. <gasps> if you only understood. Get it? Get it? Uh huh. What about vitamin K? Right? What can't we do if we don't have these things? Those are the types of questions you should prepare yourself for. Okay? Moving on to what I think is probably the last slide for all of this. It's clear out of here. They can't, it won't let me move on to the next slide until I do that. It's the only reason why I do it. How is it digested? Okay? And there's a table inside your book that says, look, hey, come on, students. Let's pay attention to the fact that, wham. Well, make it big. How many times have you seen GIP, cholecystokinine, and secretin inside of a lecture today? Forget about that or reading your book. What about gastrin? I'm going to put that in big effing letters for you guys here. I'm tired and hungry and that's why I'm starting to lose my composure. Not that I really have much composure. But you need that already. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. If you're new to this class, and this is all new to you, I apologize if I'm offending you. Okay. One way to think about regulation is that by now you've figured out that your 
this is you again, right? There's your nose. I know it's probably offending you, but I don't really care. And here's your thorax. Yeah, this is me as I'm getting older. I'm getting wider. There we go. Fantastic. And here's our mouth and food comes in because I can't stop that from happening. And here's your stomach. Woo! Yay. Go eat another pint of Ben and Jerry's Cherry Garcia. There we go. Small intestine, large intestine. Let's get out of here, the body, right? Okay, you got all of that. Let's over here for yucks and giggles. In fact, I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put this. <gasps> Not what I wanted to have happen. Fudge goals. I'll do this first. When you're studying, what is the A and S responsibility here? Responsi, L I T, and then endocrine and do crying. And that's what I want you to take away from this sort of like test number three. Your autonomic nervous system perceives the need for energy, right? It does. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. No energy, no life. So you're always thinking to yourself, oh, what about that piece of pizza I have inside the freezer? Right? Well, go stick inside the microwave. You'll feel better in a minute. That's what we mean by regulated. There is a cephalic portion, portion that will regulate gastric responsibilities that then regulate small intestinal or intestinal responsibilities, right? That's what you want to make sure you understand. Okay. How are they similar? And do you understand that autonomic responsibilities, let me add pen here, autonomic responsibilities ultimately regulate endocrine responsibilities and those endocrine reg responsibilities end up shutting off steps as we're going along, right? And this is why you don't end up digesting yourself from the inside. And these are the hormones that are required for it. That's what I want to make sure you understand. Okay, I'm sure there's other material you might have questions about. As usual, don't be afraid to send me an email message. Um, it's jmcmenamanbeleno at norwalk.edu. Let me do this. Let's get rid of that. JMCM. Oops, can't even type. If you have questions, email them to me, all right? And whatever I can answer, I will. Maybe I'll, if you get like 10 or 12 of them, I'll, email, I'll put one of these things together again for you guys and say, look, here's a question from Saskatchewan, Canada. And we'll put the whole thing together. Okay. Be safe. Have a wonderful night. And notice I'm telling you the pyloric portion of the stomach here. Why? Okay. Have a great night. Good luck with all of this. Be safe.